Hello everybody, welcome to an unedited video on how to use the Nix Package Manager. Um, I've been wanting to record this for a long time and I haven't been getting around to it because I was daunted by the process of editing, but I really don't want to deal with that, so I'm just going to get something down. Um, so here's the manual page for Nix, Nix command. Uh, it's got a lot of stuff, um, and no matter where you search, uh, there's sort of this problem where if you're new to Nix, you just can't seem to figure out what Nix is. Nixos.org, let's see. Okay, so, okay, reproducible builds. Like, what does that mean? It's just kind of laden in, uh, I think, I don't want to say jargon, but I, I mean, at least like the, the problem that reproducible builds is solving is, you know, maybe not even... Uh, something that a new user would be aware of so the fact is that this is kind of marketed towards like specific kinds of uh, developers um, makes it a little bit hard to access but the thing is that Nix if you know if we do Nix search Nix packages it contains a huge number of like I don't know let's say emulator like a game emulator um, it contains all of these uh, great user-friendly like i don't know stuff uh like gui packages that a person would just want to use without having to be a you know devops uh engineer um so yeah look wow, look at all these actually um it's a lot of terminal emulators there's, there's a few uh game boy game boy color super game boy. yeah anyways um, let's talk about what Nix actually is and uh, what you can do with it. So let's start with it as a build system. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, a CD into programming Nix. I'm going to make a directory. Um, let's call it. Uh, we'll just let's see what what what's a cool programming language. C is a cool programming language. Example C. So we're going to CD to an example C. All right. So Step numero uno is uh, to use flakes. So um, you already have Nix installed. I'm not going to go over that. Uh, Nix, uh, you also need to enable um, flakes, which can be done by editing. I think it's uh, vim slash Nix. No, wait, slash Etsy Nix OS. No, Etsy Nix, Nix.conf. There we go. Um, you can see I've got extra experimental features, Nix command flakes. You're going to need that to be inside of your nix.conf file. Um, otherwise, you will have to type Nix extra experimental. Fe You'll have to like type this every time, which is awful. All right, so um, we're going to use flakes. Uh, there are older message methods. You will see things about uh, like Nix env. Um, there's there's some weird stuff. Generally, if you ever see Nix dash and then something. It's usually not what you want. Um, the modern, the new way to do everything is through this Nix command. Um, this is the uh, this is the front end that you want to be using. So let's go ahead and do Nix init flake. Oh, and by that I meant Nix flake init. Awesome, man. I wish I was editing this right now. All right. So first thing uh, we got to do is uh, check 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 what's in here. What's going on in here? Um, okay. So we kind of have the uh, uh, what appears to be a, a coding language and uh, yeah that's exactly what it is um, we've got this set on the outside um, and we've got uh, these sort of entries um, it looks like JSON a little bit I think if you're if you're uh, trying to decipher what this is with no knowledge but uh, if you, as you start to look down further okay after description see this is weird um, what this is here is a function so the, this function takes two arguments, self and Nix packages, and I'll explain what that stuff is later. Um, and then there's a colon to demonstrate the end of the arguments, and then uh, the output of the function. So it's uh, actually a better term for this would be lambda, right? Because it's uh, you know, functional programming, right? You get inputs and there's an output, that's it. Um, there is no, you can't reassign variables, you can't do Nix packages, you know, whatever. <laughs> plus equals one. I mean, that's not a number, but you get the idea. You can't modify variables. Um, you can only return 
new values. Um, so what does this actually mean for you, the person who is not a programmer? Um, well, first of all, you got a description. All right, let's, let's take it, take it, take it slow. This is pretty easy. Uh, type in here whatever you want. It does not matter really. Um, I think it appears in the flake registry if you get in there, but whatever. Um, we got outputs, uh, which takes two arguments. Um, so the first problem that we've got here is there's a bunch of just like magic going on here. Like, okay, so what is Nix packages? Okay, what is going on? Like what is x86-4 Linux? Oh, what, what is packages? What does that mean? All right, so whenever you have uh, a flake, um, you can interact with it through the Nix command. Um, so we can do like Nix, whatever, I'll pull up man Nix. We can do a bunch of different stuff. Um, we can do Nix build. Um, this will build our package, so I'll get to that in a sec. Uh, we can develop, which will drop us into a dev shell with all of the dependencies of the package. So like say for example, your package is like a Python 3 thing, but you know, by default, whatever Python is, uh, okay, well, mine's three. Okay, let's say it's 3.11 and right by default on my system, it's 3.10. Well, we could have uh, Nix develop give us 3.11 in our path. Okay, so uh, there's also Nix shell, which is a little different, and uh, we'll also go over that. Um, so the process of doing Nix develop or Nix build, which is actually what I'm going to do here in a second, um, what it will do is it will look in the current directory, so right, right where I am, um, and it will search for a flake.nix, and then what it'll do is it will, you know, using the nix language, parse this flake, and what it wants is the outputs. So it's gonna take the outputs, and then it's gonna look for packages, and then it's gonna look for your current system. So uh, if I were to try to run this flake on like a, you know, an ARM, an ARM 64, whatever, the Arch, the Arch 64 machine, um, it would just not work because Packages dot uh, arch sixty four sixty four Linux dot default. This doesn't exist, but because we're on an x eighty six sixty four machine, um, the uh, set does exist. Here it is, very cool. And uh, here's dot default, um, which is the next thing that it looks for, right? Because if you just say Nix build, the package that's going to choose to build is the default. You can't specify more than one. You can do that by going nix build and then the path to the flake, which it's in the current directory, so I'm gonna do a period, um, nix build dot, and then a hashtag, which is like the flake symbol, and uh, and then whatever output you want. So then you can start selecting things from the output. So um, if you had a nested set, like maybe you had, um, I don't know, packages dot x8064 Linux equals, and then we could do we could do a new set inside of here. And let's say we had a thing one equals, and then inside here, thing two equals, uh, let's say nix packages dot legacy packages dot x8064 Linux dot, um, I don't know, rip grep. Um, and we can put that on there and, we can, and then format it. And what you'll see here is that we've got packages x8064 Linux. Okay, so that's where it's gonna look. Um, if we don't specify anything, it'll be default. But what we're going to do is we're going to specify thing one dot thing two. So I'm going to go to my my thing, and if I just do uh, nix build, that would build the default. But uh, instead, I can do something like nix build dot right for the current directory. So if I was in a different directory, you know, I could do dot dot slash example c uh, sign. I guess if I wanted to be really annoying, um, so dot the path, the path to the flake, hashtag, um, the output that you want. So thing, thing one, and actually there's autocomplete for this. So you thing one dot, and it'll autocomplete to thing two. So I'll go ahead and click build, and this will, yeah, okay, do that, which is a little bit complicated. So what just happened? Um, actually, I'm gonna quickly do nix build just without anything, just to show that that does something also. Um, so uh, let's let's talk about what just happened. Um, so we'll we'll get more back into this in a second. Um, I want to go over 
what it, what is it, what's in our current directory here, All right? So we've got results flake dot lock. Okay, so we already have the flake dot next. We know what that is. We got the flake dot lock. Okay, so what that did is it fetched um, the Nix packages uh, GitHub and got us a exact revision that this is going to use. And our flake will continue to do that until we run Nix flake update, at which point it will refetch and get the latest version of those uh, inputs. So what is result then? It's a symlink to the built package. Let's look in here. So we've got bin hello. We've also got share. We've got like man, the man pages and the, all this stuff. Um, but we've got hello, which is the important thing. So let's go ahead and do, let's execute that. We'll do dot slash results slash bin slash hello. And hello world. Wow. So there it is. We can also do nix build, right? Dot hashtag, we have thing one, dot thing two. Um, so that was already built. So it just replaces the sim link and it's really fast. Um, so let's execute that dot slash result bin rip grep. I believe it was. Wait, what? Oh, it's RG, right? I'm a little, a little dumb. All right, uh, so we got rip ref. Um, so we can get rid of results at any time, just trash results. Um, I, I, I use trash, you could use RM. Um, and uh, let's, uh, let's, let's get back into the flake.nix now. Now that we know that we can uh, build things, so we can create a, uh, some final output file, um, it's not super helpful, right? Because we're not doing anything fancy here. Um, we can't actually run stuff. Actually, I'm going to mention this before we go back in. We can do nix run, which is another one. So if we do nix run right now, hello world, right? So it'll run the default package. We could also do nix run dot hashtag um, thing one. I think this actually won't work because RG has a different. No, okay, well. So yeah, so then that ran rip grep. Um, so you can run things, but this is pretty limited, right? So at this point, all Nix is is a build system. Um, as we go on, you'll see that it's also kind of an operating system. Um, well, kind of, it is an operating system um, and you'll see why that is. But um, let's get back to the flake.nix. Um, so we kind of have a lot of magic just happened, right? So I just typed the word hello and that somehow magically seemed to produce this, right? How, how does the word, how, how is the hello, you know, whatever, Nix packages, legacy pack, like dot hello. How is this, you know, a whole piece of software? You know, like how come I can just switch this out and do Firefox? Okay, well, if I go to the internet, Nix packages, right? Um, this is what we're fetching. So this right here, if we actually go into the flake.nix and we look at the outputs, um, oh, well, actually, I think because of the way, yeah, okay, so outputs here, this is the outputs. Um, there's a bunch of stuff going on here, but you know, legacy packages. Um, there's a whole explanation of what this is, but uh, it's a slightly older way of getting packages. Um, and this is one of the outputs of the Nix packages flake. So, okay, so we get Nix packages, here's that, and we can see what's going on inside of this magic word by going to the Nix packages repo and investigating this, right? So we could go to legacy packages. We see it's importing dot slash dot. That's a little bit odd. Um, that means that it's importing the default.nix in the current directory, right? So it's in, if it's importing the current directory, it's gonna look for default.nix. Um, so we go into that, that's what it's importing. Um, and then there's a bunch of stuff going on here and it, it like, we could go very deep into this, but I really don't want to. Um, that seems not fun. Uh, <laughs> let's get back to probably more pressing questions. Where did this come from? Okay, well, we seem to have specified it here, but what if I want a different flake, right? So I have, um, uh, let's do a shameless plug, right? GitHub, the Argus slash Spicedify Nix. Okay, so here is my uh, Spicedify flake, right? Uh, you don't have to know what this is. It's a 
thing for customizing Spotify. Um, but let's say we want that. Can we just do Spicify Nix, right? Because that's the name of the flake, right? Can't we just do that? Doesn't that work? Uh, no, it, it it won't. It doesn't know what this is. So why does it know what Nix package it is? Well, Nix has a flake, flake registries, which are basically like a list of packages that it lets just kind of, you can just refer to them by name and it will uh, just work. Um, but let's make this explicit. So instead of using like the fact that, you know, Nix just kind of knows what Nix packages is, let's go ahead and uh, define it explicitly ourselves. And we do that by defining the inputs. So we're gonna say inputs. And in here, we will put um, Nix packages. And what you're gonna wanna set this equal to is a set which contains, it contains a few different options, uh, but the ones we're going to, the one we are going to use is URL, and we're going to set that equal to GitHub, right? So I think you can set this as a, if I'm not mistaken, I think you can do like, no, actually, no, you can't. Okay, so if it's a GitHub link, um, which pretty much everything I've ever used is a GitHub link, or at least has a GitHub mirror, the way you format this is GitHub colon, and then the owner of the repository, which is NixOS, and then the name of the repository, Nix Packages. And I'm gonna put a colon, a uh, semicolon to finish that. But I am gonna add one extra thing, which is that I specifically want a certain version of Nix Packages. So I'm gonna look here at what I want is 22. Uh, it's 22.11. Yeah, so we got all this 22.11 stuff. Here, Nix OS 22.11, that's the one I want. So I'm gonna get that by doing question mark. This is like you know, URL encoded sort of. Um, ref equals, and then the name of the thing that I want. So NixOS. Now, if you wanted to instead get, say, a specific commit, right? Let's like I'll grab this commit right here. Um, let's see, commit. How do I get the exact? I guess if I browse the files, I can copy it from the URL. Okay, so here's the big commit hash. Um, if we wanted to get a specific commit hash. So we could paste that here, but that doesn't quite work. You need to do rev, so we'll do rev. Um, but I'm gonna undo that because uh, I do not want that recent commit hash. That's the most recent, <laughs> it was made four minutes ago. I don't want that, might not be stable. Um, so let's see here. Um, okay, we've got that commit, we've got the inputs uh, looking good. So now we have this explicit Nix packages uh, input. Uh, let's add uh, actually, let's not add another input. I'll just demonstrate really fast. Like, right, so if I wanted to do spice to find Nix, spice to find Nix, and I could actually, I could shorten this, do kind of a shorthand. If a set only has one thing in it, you can just do dot, right, to, and it will just imply that. So you can do spice to find at Nix dot URL equals, um, and then, you know, GitHub, colon DR, whatever, and, uh, you know, put a colon at the end. I'm not going to do that because I don't need spice to find. All right, so let's get down here. I'm going to now delete all of our outputs. Um, uh, self, this function is actually recursive. Um, so self is the outputs. So that's how you reference other elements of it, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, all right, so let's do this the better way. Um, what we need to do is import Nix packages. So let's, let's just, look, whatever. What we need is import Nix packages and we'll do quotes uh, but we got to supply it with our system so we're going to do system equals I'll put our quotes x86 uh, underscore 64 Linux um, so this is kind of a legacy way to do this there's like a there's a better way which is to use like a, it's, it's a different setup a different way of saying the same thing where you say uh, local system equals and then you put system inside of that and it's like it's better because um, that one provides more options it supports more options so inside of local system you can also include stuff like uh, libc equals muscle which is cool if you know what muscle is um, but uh, we're not going to do that right now we're just going to say okay import nix packages and the system we're on is x86 64 links and uh, you might say hey 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 can't we just automatically detect that? Did it detect that? 
right? Like, okay, what if somebody uses an Arch 64? Do we have to hard code that, you know, for each possible thing? Uh, and the answer is uh, kind of, yeah, you do have to hard code it because the way Nix works is that it's totally stateless. So you can't query things like you can't be like inside of Nix. There's no uh, built-ins, built-ins.system time. There is no like built-ins dot, there's, there's no function like generate random number. And there is nothing like, uh, you know, current system. Well, actually there is, but <laughs> that's if you use uh, impure mode, but I'm not gonna talk about that. Um, so you can't really access anything about the state of the system. You can only perform actions based on the inputs. So you have to be given the system explicitly. Um, so as a string written in the code, um, you can't even pass it in. It's, there's no like command line arguments. You can't do like nix build dot and then like add input. Like you can't add an input at the command line. It all has to be written inside of your nix code. Okay, so uh, let's grab this. And uh, so that we can reference it easily, what we're going to do is create a let in block. So right after the uh, this this little input area right here, we're going to do let in. And what this means is that we can now define variables. So we can be we can do something like oh we could do system equals all right. Well, if I do uh, put this here, system x is all right. Okay, so we can say system equals this, and then down here we can do stuff like. Uh, my system equals system, whatever. And we can refer to the system variable because we had this let in block right before the place where we're referring to it. So whenever you have a let in, the next thing that comes after the let in is uh, able to refer to the contents of the let in. All right, so let's make a variable called packages and it's gonna be equal to that import that we had earlier. Let's go ahead and format that. Um, currently getting an it's an unused error. Um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and use it. So we've just imported Nix packages. This is the right way to do it, as opposed to doing you know, Nix packages legacy pack. You don't want to do that. So instead, we're going to import Nix packages, and uh, there's going to be a ton of stuff that's available to us. Um, so let's do for our our outputs. We're going to add packages. Uh, and we're going to set that equal to set. And we're going to say the default is equal to packages dot. And then whatever. Um, and the way you can find all the packages that are available to you are by running the command nix search. And then the name, the flake, right? Nix packages is in the registry. So nix just automatically knows what nix packages means. You could also do if you know do it explicitly github colon nix os like whatever but we're just going to do nix packages because it's a nice shorthand it's in the registries um and we're going to search for whatever we want uh the what, firefox right we're going to get all this stuff about firefox um uh, here's something i don't know what this is um but let's just uh paste that in here uh, if i could get my editor to work it might have caps lock on or something Okay, um, default, and then we're going to get, uh, we'll, we'll make another one called, uh, you know, actually, we'll go like this. Um, my package is equal to uh, Firefox, and then default will be, so if you remember, self is equal to the outputs, so it's this. Um, that causes problems, right, if I were to do default equals self.packages.default. This would cause issues because clearly self.packages.default, okay, this is self, which refers to packages, which refers to default. And then that also, so it's, you can see it's recursive. Um, so we can't do that, but what we can do is self.packages.mypackage because this will resolve, right? So. Default will look for what that is. It'll go evaluate, find my package, and it'll see that it's this, and that works fine. Um, so we are missing one thing right now, which is that this actually needs to be packages.x86 64 Linux. 
So that's a little annoying because that means we have to hard code this twice, which we don't want to do that. So instead, we are going to take the system equals and bring that out here. And then down here, instead of typing it like this, we're going to use a sort of string replacement functionality, which is kind of looks similar to bash the system. So packages and then a set with the same name as the string that's inside of these braces. So packages.x64 Linux equals and then the contents of this set. Um, so we've only got one issue now, which is that this no longer has the system in it. So we could do system equals system, but there is a cool shorthand for this, which is if you have ever have you know a thing equals a thing of the same name, just do inherit and then the name of the thing, inherit system. So that's cool. And now we have uh, some packages that we can build. All right, so let's go ahead and make our own package. I think I might split that into a different episode though. So that covered flakes and uh, the flake.nix file and the nix build, as well as the nix run and nix search commands. Um, nix, we also briefly covered nix flake update, which actually I'm gonna do right now. Uh, I think that's pretty much everything for flakes. The one thing that I can think of is we should have everything in a Git repository. Um, as you start to use more files, you'll find that Nix will give you errors if stuff isn't added to version control. So we're gonna head and do git init. Um, and I'm gonna do git add dot to just git add everything. Uh, oh wait, git rm result. Sorry, I don't actually want the result to be in there. Git rm dash f result. I'm also going to add a git ignore file and I'm going to ignore results. So uh, now we don't have to deal with accidentally adding that. So I'll git add dot git ignore. Uh, there we go. So and then we'll do git commit uh, flake tutorial. There we go. And now other flakes, if we were to upload this to remote, could reference it right with the URL github colon whatever my name slash my flake. However, you do that, um, which is really cool because then you create kind of a community made like ecosystem of built software where each one can inherit the instructions on how to build the software from another repository. It's very cool. Okay, I think that's gonna end it off for this episode. I'm going to go straight into another one about building your own packages.